what we've been doing today has been working on uh, the camera API, the camera plugin, the ability for us to use the camera of the device via JavaScript. This was just a kind of experimental to test this out, how it works. This isn't something that I'm going to keep. Uh, so what we'll do is I'm going to close all of these files I was working with in Notepad. I've saved them and I'm going to close them. Uh, I'm going to go back to my folder where my project is at. So back on my flash drive in my apps. I was working with a template project with today's date. This was just this that I was playing with this camera project. I'm going to open that folder again if you're not there. And we'll go back to the config file, config XML. <coughs> Edit the config XML of the current project. And as I said, if you rename the package ID, it's it's a new app. You might have noticed that if you go into your real device, you, you might notice two icons of the exact same app. On mine, I've got template app, and right next to it, I've got template app. Even though I created two different apps with different IDs, they can have the exact same icon and the exact same name. I've got template app twice. Well, that's because this, we never changed number three here. Line three is the icon that appears, the, the text that appears below the icon. So if you're getting confused which of these two template apps is today's work, well, it's right here under template app. So just for myself, I'm going to say test camera. That's what our project for today was, just some little test camera thing. And uh, maybe my package ID up here, just to reflect that, I'll also put test camera, lowercase. Uh, it looks like you can put numbers, but they have to be after... And they can't compose the whole ID. So if you want, you can put numbers there. But I'm going to put just test camera on the ID and then the name below the icon. If you want to, you can change this version over here 2016 10 16, uh, to 6. Put it today's date, the 11th, if you want. It's the sort of internal stuff that's behind the scenes. If you want to change number four, you could. That's as much as I'll do for the moment. ID, version, name of the app. If I save and run this one more time in Taco, or through Taco, in the command prompt, this should load as the same as before. The big idea here is, since I'm using this real device, it remembers that I've been installing apps. If you're using a virtual device, it'll forget, because these computers forget everything when you restart them. If you're running on a real device, I now, after running this one more time, have three copies, so to speak, of these projects that I've been working on. Let me pull this up. <coughs> Installing, okay, so it's running on my device as before. It's there. My point is if I go back to my option, my apps, I still have template app, template app, but I have next to it test camera. So I have th three copies, three icons of that same Cordova icon, template app, template app, camera test or test camera. So the other two, that's just the way it works. The other two are still there because they're they're different. They're different apps. They have different package IDs. Uh, and then this brand new one would have also been called, been called template app unless I changed the name of the icon. So to clean myself up a little bit here, in my device, I can tap and hold one of those extraneous apps and drop it into uninstall. If I tap and hold, it'll say, what do you want to do with it? I'm going to tap and hold and drag to uninstall. For myself, I'm going to clean up those apps there that I installed. I don't need those two template apps. They were just templates. And I've got installed test camera, the one I just named right now. Maybe I want to keep that one to show people, hey, everyone, when I go back to show my friends and family, hey, everyone, look at this cool camera app that I made. It's not that cool, but you made it. You wrote the code. You made it work. And you've got a camera app there that you can show off. 
No one else can download it yet because it's not in a real app store, of course. You can show people, I made this app. Look, it's installed on my device. Eventually, it'll be downloadable for you if it has more functionality. But this, um, this testing app that we were playing with, it's there, and I'll probably forget about it and never use it again because it's so basic, so I'm going to delete it eventually. Uh, I also have, back on day one or two or something, I still have an app called Test One. This one that I played with that I changed the icon. Um, again, that's something I don't really need. That was just testing, so I'm going to uninstall that. You can decide what you want to do with your device. I'm just saying that a little bit of management and cleanup of your real device once in a while might be good, especially if they're all still using the default count, uh, the default Cordova uh, icon. We're going to talk about changing icons soon. But this is the importance, one of the many bits of importance of the config XML file, delineating a brand new app. I'm going to save and close that config file. Back to my flash drive. I say that because hopefully before the break, you made a copy of the original template one more time. I made a copy. It's got the name copy. This is going to be our app then going forward for real. So I'm going to call this my SDCE with today's date. I'll be putting a copy of my code in the network folder and I'll be putting the date. Now I want to start for real the ultimate project that we're ending up in the class, that project that we started last month. I want to start to import that very soon next time. I've got one more thing before that. Because technically, we could basically drop the folder of everything we did last month into WW folder, and it'll kind of work. And I've got a handout for you of these loose ends that we need to tie up, but we'll get to that on Thursday. I want to start to set up this project because it is a real project that I want to further work with to the rest of the semester. Just because I renamed the folder, it's not ready yet, is it? I made a copy of template, so this is going to be installed again as template app. So I made the copy, I renamed it to my SDCE, open that up, and let's edit the config file. This is in your my SDCE folder, edit config XML. Your name if you'd like there, and then my SDCE. That's the unique identifier for this app. Again, you can put the date on that. But definitely we'll change line 3. This is my SDCE. That's what's going to appear below the icon. Why spell it that way? <coughs> well, this is for style. We're using, uh, I don't know, this modern style of naming things. It's a nice short name and we'll mix up the capitalization there just for fun. Just like when we first saw what's an iPhone, everyone wanted to spell it iPhone. Nope, it's iPhone. So ours is my SDCE. Just some creative spelling. You can put any other thing that you want there for that name, but remember, whatever we, we put on that name, if it's too big, well, it'll crop over to the next line, or another icon might uh, cover its name. Description. We'll say here the unofficial San Diego continuing education app. You can change anything under line five if you want. The way this the way that I've usually taught this class for the last few years is that I'm uh, writing my code, I'm putting a copy of my code in the network folder, you can get a copy of my code at the end of the day, and then you can use it as is, change it how you want. Eventually, I would like to have, and this is not <laughs> into like month three, I would like to have everyone to have their own unique version of it, 
because if you're copying my code, then you're going to be com.jones.whatever. And when we get to the point of uploading our app to the real app store, it will reject yours because there's already a com.jones.mysdce. This is something we don't have to deal with for like seven more weeks. But just think of that, that if you get a copy of my work, it's my work. And therefore, if you try to upload it to the app store, I've already uploaded it. I'll touch on that later, of course. But here, we're all kind of working on the same kind of project. Eventually, I want you to have your unique version of it. We'll get to that later. Save config XML. And I want to get rid of that Cordova icon that has that I've been staring at this whole time. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give you um, a new handout. If you go to the network folder, uh, handout number six, icons and splash screen. Copy that over to your flash driver desktop. We'll we'll look at the we'll look at the uh, document. You can print it after the lecture since the printer is loud. So I so handout number six. Not that long, but um, this is a kind of handout that's a lot of work. Let me go over in in general. Uh, there's a section about defining the app icon and a section about defining the uh, splash screen, the first bit of code, uh, the first bit of graphic that appears when the app loads up. In your project folders, root level, we're going to open the res folder. Inside, we'll see folders for assets for the different um, platforms. So go back to your project. The, the my SDCE project res folder we saw this briefly before res folder icons Android if you go up to your view menu large icons so we've got the four versions of the basic Cordova icon um, We could design our own icons, edit these existing icons. We have a lot of options. But what I'm saying here is we've got, uh, we should create 24-bit ping files with transparency in the following dimensions, which are squares. Now, we're going to start on it, and we're getting close to the end of the day, and we'll continue with it on, on Thursday. But I want to have my own icons. I don't want that Cordova icon anymore. So that means we're going to... Uh, use Photoshop a little bit. How many of you have ever used Photoshop before? A few people. And if you haven't, that's fine. That's a much more, that's a different sort of mentality. That's the artistic mentality, whereas a lot of us might have the programmer mentality. And sometimes those camps don't really line up sometimes. But you, as your app developer, you need to do it all. You need to program it, you need to design it. So we're going to play a little bit with Photoshop today and Thursday. And you're not going to become a Photoshop pro at all. But I'm going to show you some cool things you can do in Photoshop quickly to create some icons for your app. So let's um, go to the Start menu, search for Photoshop. We have Photoshop installed, I think the latest version maybe. Uh, Photoshop costs uh, like $9.99 a month for the student version to like $34 a month for the non-student version. And there's also Adobe Photoshop Elements that you can get for a one-time cost of between $70 and $90. So we've got the full version of Photoshop. Go ahead and click Adobe Photoshop CC 2015. Photoshop was invented, I believe, in 1990. So there's been 25, 26 years of Photoshop trickery in this world. And what we're going to use Photoshop for is to design some to design an app icon. Also going to give some advice here because we saw in the folder there are four sizes for our app icon. 36 pixels squared, 48, 72, 96. 
in the world of graphic design, Photoshop, if we design a graphic that is 36 pixels big, and then we try to resize it so that it's 96 pixels, it's going to look terrible. A small graphic converted to a large graphic loses quality. The, the, the reverse, a large graphic resized down to a small graphic doesn't lose the same quality, like going from small to big. So my point here is, it's best to start off designing your app icons in the larger size to then resize it down to the smaller sizes. This size of 96 pixels is still a little too small. Looking much further ahead into month three, eventually when we're going to upload our apps to the app stores, they're also going to want a high quality 512 pixel sized icon to display on a variety of devices. So we're going to create an icon for our app at that larger size, 512. And then we're going to save it as these four different versions to replace this icon. So in Photoshop, very complex software. I'll show you what you need to know for our purposes, but there's lots to learn. Let's go up to the File menu, New. We want a new graphic. It says, okay, what dimensions and such do we want? Well, first of all, um, let's switch here under the width property, 7 by 5 inches. We don't want inches. We don't use inches on a device, really, for graphics. Let's change that inches over to pixels. They should both change to pixels. Let's change this resolution to 72 width. 512 and height 512. Make sure these are pixels and not inches. 512 inches is not going to work. We need 512 pixels. Resolution 72. Background contents transparent. So we want a square graphic. 72 resolution transparent background as my handout says because if you notice the icons in the device on any device Android iPhone and such they have transparency if you've got an icon like uh, the Google Chrome icon it's a little circle you see through the edges to the background if you don't have transparency like this it's gonna have a white square behind your icon it'll look weird It'll have your icon and a white square behind it. Nothing has a white square. They have real, you know, shapes, and you can see through the empty parts of the shape. Like if you see your Google Play Store icon, it's got a handle at the top. You can see through that handle. So if you don't have a transparency here, you'll have a white background. 512 by 512. So from big size to small size is good. From small size to big size is bad. So we're starting with the big size to shrink it down. Um, <coughs> name of the file, I guess we'll call this icon-512. If you didn't call it that there elsewhere, we'll change it in a moment. But the name of our file will be icon-512, I guess 512 pixels, whatever. Uh, size 512, 512, 72, transparent. Click OK. You get a canvas. Mine's a little slow. You get a canvas of checkerboard pattern. If, if you didn't get a checkerboard, you didn't select transparent. You need to try again. File new. You should have the checkerboard because that represents transparency. After all, how can you show invisibility? So checkerboard. File save as. This is going to be our file where we're designing an icon. We're going to save this as our work in progress file. I'm going to save this. I'll give you a copy of this to the network folder if you want it later on, but I'm saving a copy of this to my flash drive. You can save it anywhere you want. Uh, I'm not going to save it in the actual app folder 
yet because we're going to save this as a PSD file, a Photoshop document. This is our work in progress file. We're going to see Photoshop is very powerful. Maybe we designed something and we're not quite happy with it. We want to change it. My handout says we're going to create PNG files, but those are the final files to put into our app. This is our work in progress. So we're going to save it as a .psd, and I'm going to save it somewhere in my flash drive, not necessarily in my folder yet. I'm going to save it in my class folder, perhaps. It's going to be called icon-512px.psd. Save. Maybe you get a pop-up about maximizing compatibility, just click OK so that you can open it in older versions of Photoshop. And so what we have with Photoshop is a very powerful software that lets you create and edit graphical or photo content. Um, there's lots of tools to work with, lots of complexity. We get into concepts like layers and channels and lots of complexity. Um, but for us as developers or people that maybe are more adept in the programming aspect, a shortcut to design your icon here is if we use shapes. On the left side, you have your strip of icons, of tools. And you've got a tool that which is a little square. It should be near a black arrow and a hand. It's a rectangle. It's a square. And it has a triangle in the corner. Photoshop has so many tools to do so many things that there are tools hidden inside of tools, like a drawer. I open up my drawer right here. Tools. I can open up a drawer of tools by clicking and holding for a moment. I have different tools, like shapes. Well, these basic rectangles and squares are very boring. We've got built-in custom shapes. We've got a couple dozen interesting shapes you could possibly use for your icon. So we'll do this. Tap and click and hold. <laughs> click and hold this rectangle. Not the one that's got a black and white gradient. That's the gradient. The one that's down here, just a regular rectangle. Click and hold it for a moment. And then select custom shape tool. It's a little splat. And on the top of Photoshop, you have the options bar, which changes depending on the tool you have selected. I have this custom shape tool selected, so the top shows the custom shapes, where I have a color of my shape. If you click the fill color, you have colors to work with. And the actual shapes are over here. I've got so far an arrow shape. But if I were to click and drag in the canvas, this would draw an arrow, in my case, a green arrow. I can undo that, of course. Edit Undo or Control Z on the keyboard, like any other software. Let's say I'm drawing a shape. I don't like it anymore. OK, Edit Undo. Control Z. I've got some shapes here that I can work with, like a uh, light bulb. I can click the light bulb, close the shape drawer, and then click and drag to make that icon. I have a few of them to choose from, not that many, unless you go to The options, if you click on your shape right here, then you've got a little gear for options. Click there, and then it says, OK, show me icons about flowers, or arrows, I mean. Film, frames, music, other objects, shapes, web, animals. So if I go to these options and select show me animal shapes, it says, would you like to add animal shapes to your current shapes, which is append, or would you like to replace 
the current icons I have with only animal shapes. For the moment I'll say OK, which is replace the current icons with just animal icons. And so I get like a paw print. I can do more than one, of course. I'm going to do a snail here. Maybe change the colors. Again, this is tricky because there's so many tools and options and such. But if I'm going to draw another icon on top of this icon and I go to change the color, well, it might change the color of the selected one. You know, there's a lot of nuances because we've also got layers. I drew the shape of a paw right here. This is a layer. It's separate. I've selected it. I see the, the highlight around it. If I click the empty spot in my layers, it deselects so that I can draw a new shape with a new color. Again, this is not a Photoshop class. There's a million things to learn here we're going to spend today and then sometime on Thursday to further play with Photoshop. So if it's frustrating and weird, don't worry, we'll look at it some more. But if I click on an empty spot there, I deselected that layer so that I can select another color, so that I can select another shape and draw another shape. Deselect. It's going to be a really weird icon. It doesn't quite look as polished as the other icons you've seen. Again, we're going to spend a little more time later, but um, I'm going to undo this. Edit undo. Uh, undo in Photoshop is different than every other software that if you undo, if you do Control Z one time to undo, Control Z again, it brings it back. This is a toggle in Photoshop. Undo, redo, undo, redo. In every other software, undo takes you back, takes you back, takes you back. In Photoshop, you have to step backward, which is Control-Alt-Z. You want to keep going back and back and back. Control-Z only goes back and forth. Control-Alt-Z takes you back further. Because what I want to do here is, I've got lots of shapes to work with. I would recommend select all. Show me all the shapes. I don't want to go back and forth to each swatch book of shapes. I want them all. Click all and click OK to replace, and then there you go. you got lots of icons. If you drag the corner of that little box, you have all of these icons. Now, I don't know how to draw. I'm going to make an icon about an, an, educational, you know, an educational app. I don't know how to draw anything. There's an icon here of students somewhere walking to school. Right there, the student icon. That would work great for my educational app. Maybe I can make, you know, I can put one shape down first and then put another shape on top of it. You need to know how to draw and use built in shapes, and next time we'll talk about even more shapes. But see, it's kind of a short handout, but it's a big endeavor create 24-bit ping icons. Well, that's a huge <laughs> endeavor. We're not going to get to very much of this handout yet as we reach the end of the day. What I want to do is give you the rest of the day to kind of experiment with Photoshop a little bit, make mistakes and call me over and such, and play with these shapes and see if you can do anything cool. And if you have experience in Photoshop, perhaps incorporate that. When we come back next time, I'll show you more Photoshop tricks and such, like adding drop shadows and fading it and all of that cool stuff. We're getting out of time because I want you guys to actually make some unique icons. Uh, I, everyone's going to kind of be working toward the same general app, but you will customize it. Your own unique icon, your own splash screen, your own colors, your own design. Functionality is very similar to all of us. You can stray from it, of course. And I will then encourage us, when we get to it, to customize it visually. And a lot of us might not have Photoshop skills. That's OK. We'll spend a little bit of time on it. Um, so I'm going to work on this, just regular old save. When we come back, we'll talk about, OK, if I worked on this amazing icon, how do I then save it as a PNG, like my handout says, and the right sizes and all of that? We'll get to that on. Thursday. 
and I'll give you, give you all some time to work a little bit on Photoshop if you'd like. I'm going to put a copy of my um, folder of my work so far into the network folder and we'll wrap it up at this point. If you need any help, call me over. If you came in a little late, remember to sign in. If this is your first day here, remember to sign up for the class with the ad code. That's it for the moment.